Hey guys, welcome back to Todd Audio. I finally got around to starting on some room acoustics and I got some footage together to be able to show you how to make one of these in the corner, these bass traps. Let me start out by saying that a huge influence for me, the primary influence has been Ethan Weiner and a bunch of other posts and how-tos that I've seen online that all seem to always fall back to him and his influence. Ethan Weiner, he's an expert in this stuff. He's He's got his own company, Realtraps.com. Check it out for more information. If you don't feel like taking the time to do this and have the money to spend on it, his are the best, you know, they, he's, he's got all kinds of solutions for room acoustics. With that said, I've seen some similar tutorials of what, I've about, what I'm about to show you. Um, mine is what I came up with for a pretty low cost way of doing it with Roxel safe and sound. And um, I wanted something that I didn't have to actually mount into the wall. So these are stackable. And if I wanted to bring everything into a different room in the house, I could technically just unstack them and carry them into a different room. So less destructive than building shelves into the wall like some of the other tutorials I've seen. I just built frames. And get online and research about this stuff. Look into that Ethan Weiner. Get on the forms. Look up how to do room acoustics. Look up what might be the best solution for you. Um, these are pretty heavy duty ones I built here. And that's what I'd recommend if you really want to get the best results out of it. But let's get started. First let me say that before you get started with this, you are going to want to measure out your room after you watch the video and figure out what materials and how much of what you need in order to accommodate your room and then what size top to bottom that you're going to want to build each of these panels. So these standard on mine are about 24 and 3 quarters inches high and that's what I'm going to base my tutorial off of. But for example, in my room down here, I've got like a power outlet. So there's things like that to consider. I had to basically build a shelf that's a similar build to the in interior frames of these in order to boost it up and give me room for that power outlet down there. So look at your room, figure out all the details, measure the distance between the floor and the ceiling. And if you have to make the final one on the stack shorter than the 24 and 3 quarter inch one, then go ahead and do that. Just take out some of the foam bats on the inside. Step 1. Cutting the wood for the frame. Measure your 2x2 two two wood strips so you can cut them in 24 inch segments. Then angle your saw blade at 45 degrees with a wall on it so you can split each 24 inch segment diagonally. Be very careful while doing this and have something to push it through when it gets toward the end. Then get your two foot by four foot piece of fiberboard and measure it so that you can draw a line right down the middle in order to divide it into two even squares. And then after you've drawn those squares, draw new lines to divide each square diagonally into two even triangles so that you can get four equal size triangles out of each two foot by four foot 
piece of fiberboard. Then use your table saw to very carefully cut down the lines you've just drawn. Remember, the first priority while using your table saw is not to cut yourself. Then make the same equal triangles out of your quarter inch piece of plywood. For each individual base trap, you'll end up using three pieces of the 2x2 two two wood strips split down the middle, one piece of the quarter inch plywood triangle, and one of the half inch fiberboard triangles. Step 2. Assembling the frame. Get your screws and your drills ready. If you have one drill, you'll have to switch out drill bits and begin drilling holes through the piece of fiber board and into the support legs. Then screw your screw in place. When you're putting these two front legs on, make sure that you don't put the larger front face of the 2x2 two two split on the front side of the base trap. You want that to be on the side that's going to be against the wall. What I'm doing there is just drilling out the hole a little bit to make more room for the screw when it goes in so that it can embed itself down into the fiber board rather than sticking out. Again, make sure the longest edge of the triangular leg is going to be against the wall when you push the base trap into the corner. Then you attach the thinner piece of plywood the same way you did with the bottom piece. The thicker piece of fiber board ends up being the bottom of the base trap so it offers more support when you begin to stack them in the corner. Now your frame is complete. Step 3. Filling the frame with Roxul Safe and Sound. Use some of your other triangles you've cut out to use as a type of template and it makes it a lot easier to cut this. This is where your bread knife is going to come into play in order to cut through the Safe and Sound. Right here you want to have about a half inch overlayer on your template because the Roxel Safe and Sound is actually 23 inches wide and 47 inches long even though they call it 48 by 24. After you've set up your template, use the bread knife to cut with a swift motion vertically. It, I found it works best if you go up and down quickly 
But in the horizontal motion, you just go slowly and take your time with that and gradually work your way across. And it helps to wear gloves on this step as well as a face mask if you want to use extra caution and protection. It can get a little bit itchy if you do without the gloves. Then just sim simply start stacking the triangles. I found it best to use to keep it on the template and just slide it off that onto the frame there. And then you continue just to repeat that step. Slide the triangle in. And just keep on going until it's fully stacked up. If you're doing the 24 inch high frame, you're going to have eight layers of the rock sole. And keep in mind that this is actually going to be a little over 24 inches high because of the fiberboard on the bottom and the plywood on the top. So that's something to account for when calculating your measurements. On the last there, just kind of push it down slightly to make room, slide it in. And then I found it was good to kind of lift up on it to kind of fill it all in and make sure there's some pressure toward the top of it. Step four, covering with fabric. First, cut your fabric into squares so that when you use it to cover up the front face of the base trap, it has about two to three inches of over there on each side where you can wrap it around the sides. Set your base trap on the edge of a table and then just hang your fabric over the top in the position that you want to staple it. Start with the corners, the top two corners, and fold the fabric in and just put one staple to hold it on each corner. And then do the same with the bottom corners. With fleece, I found that you don't want to stretch it a whole lot. You just want to pull it so that it's just taut. You don't want to have it really stretched out, but just make sure there's no slack in it. Then go to the edges and staple them. It seemed to work best to start kind of in the middle and then it kind of bubbles out on each side and just keep going with the middle sections of each section until you fully close it off. Once you get closer to having the full thing wrapped and stapled, then you can just start putting staples where they make the most sense. On the top of it, I just put about three or four staples on each one just to keep that in place. Then go to the bottom and kind of pull it out from the table a little bit to give you room and then just do the same technique as on the sides you may not need quite as many staples but just start in the middle 
and just kind of work your way across it to get all of the loose spots there. And that's it. Now you have the complete base trap that you can build more of and stack them in the corners of your room. On this one you can see that there's a few lumps where the insulation on the inside is pressing against the fabric. So if you want to, before you put the fabric on, I'll either found you can kind of push it in and make sure it's all flush. You won't have that problem as much. The main reason why you even see it here though is because the camera lighting is so bright that it exposes all of that. In normal room lighting, I found that you really can't even see it much unless you have some light shining like right on it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something from it and that I was able to kind of point you in the right direction of where to get started with your room acoustics, which bass traps are a great way to start out. If there's anything else or you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribe and check out some of my other videos. I do a combination between home recording and home performances. And that's mainly it, but there might be a few random ones mixed in. Thanks for watching again and have an awesome day.